Fala aí, pessoal. Eu estou aqui nos Estados Unidos para aprimoramento em certas tecnologias que estão saindo agora. É, nesse treinamento que eu estou fazendo, eu conheci muita gente nova e muitos produtos novos. Eu trouxe aqui para vocês é, dois grandes especialistas que nós temos em cases e cooling. Hoje eles vão ensinar para a gente, ou melhor, eles vão dizer para a gente o que, que eles tomam por base quando eles vão projetar um case, desde o zero. Vamos aprender um pouco sobre isso. Esse é o Jorge e esse é o Guilherme. Hey Brasil, hello from US. Hi Brazil, I'm George. What did you consider when you plan a new case from zero? The first thing we plan is to try and figure out uh, what we are trying to make. Uh, are we trying to make a, a $50 case or a $100 case or uh, a really good cooling case? And we do that by looking around and seeing what people are buying and what's wrong with the product that they currently buy. At $50, they're buying this, but what could we do better? Uh, so that's what we first do, and we define the features and the performance based on what we think uh, we could do better than the product that is number one right now. Okay. So we look at you know the case that sells number one at $50, how could we make that better? And then we make our version of it. And then I create a list of all the features and things I want, like a menu at a restaurant, and I give that to Guillermo. Yeah, so the most important thing is to determine what functionality we want on the case, right? Two HDDs, three HDDs, two SSDs, how many ODDs, what motherboard sizes, what PSU sizes, and that determines the overall size, which affects the cost considerably, right? So as soon as we have the cost and the features, we can start mapping out the 2D. Yeah, and then usually, after he sees my first menu and he says, not for this, not for this, not for this, <laughs> this much money, no way. And so we, we go back and forth for a few months, and eventually we come up with a product that is uh, really, really good uh, for the price point. And usually, has, uh, in the past three, three, four years we've been working together, we've done a pretty good job of, of hitting the right feature and price uh, ratios for a lot of cases. So George will ask for everything, right? He says, oh, I want this, and we're going to have this, oh, oh, and we're competitive, oh, oh. No, you know, I everything. understand. <laughs> so at some point we struggle back and forth, we say, no, I cannot give you this, no, and then he says, no, but you got to try this, we got to try it. Uh, so there's a lot of back and forth to determine yeah, what we other, want, right? Otherwise his job is too easy. I, yeah. I, I, I got it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, how long to take the, the case from the plan, from zero, to be ready and uh, ready to sell. So, oh, to sell, to ship? Yeah, yes. Uh, the fastest we can do it is in about six months, seven months. Six from months. the time we conceptualize it, say, hey, we need a case at $50 that competes against uh, this other case in the market, to the time we actually start MP and shipping, six to seven months. Yeah, that's the fastest. But some of the cases have taken a lot longer. Uh, for example, a 900D took almost two years oh. uh, because it was very complex and it had a lot of different features and then we actually completely scrapped it and started over again about three or four months into it because we ran into some kind of issues that we just didn't like and uh, I think it depends on how how different the case is going to be for something like um, you know 230T which is very similar to existing case we had it could be six to nine months but for something like the Air 540 or Air 240, oh, uh. or 900D, which is very different, it could take a year, usually. A uh, few years ago, Corsair is now because to made uh, good quality uh, cases, but the two serious cases. Now, Corsair have a big changes, and you have crazy cases. How did you plan to do these crazy cases? <laughs> um, we hired Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, okay, said, thank Your you. Your case is too serious. <laughs> yeah, okay. You need something fun. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, no, it's, it's not far off the truth. We, uh, when we first launched cases, the Obsidian cases were our, uh, our first and most successful cases. Okay. And uh, those, you know, uh, for some areas, they really love that. You know, mm. in the United States and in uh, the Scandinavian countries, they love that really clean square box. Um, but when we started getting more and more feedback from Latin America, uh, Brazil, uh, Argentina, uh, even Asia, Eastern Europe, uh, they all said, you know, we want something with a little bit of style, with some kind of looks and colors and things like that. So we listened to that feedback and we created separate cases for those regions that had those kinds of things. So when, for example, with the 230T Orange, uh, the main reason we decided to do an orange version is because we wanted to get some more attention and have something really colorful and interesting, and it worked really well. A lot of people really like that color. Yeah. Yeah, we did a big study on colors actually, right? We, we on, on a couple of these cases, uh, traditionally we've been done black and white, but then we went out and looked at metallics, 
looked at many different colors. What we found are that the basic colors, the oranges, the greens, the yellows, are the ones that work the best. I see about the Lamborghini color <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the little cases. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of yeah. a lot of car colors. We uh, so this yeah. color is actually from an old uh, Dodge uh, Challenger, yeah. uh, 1968 or something. Dodge Challenger color, and then the. Uh, the yellow that we have on the 380T and 780T is very, very similar to the Lamborghini yellow. And the red is the Ferrari red? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Actually, we can see uh, lots of l uh, little cases in the marketing. Mm. Uh, do you think this is a tendency and it will grow up? Or you think the mid tower and full towers still have a big wall in front? I think that we've seen many ITX uh, become very, very popular over the last two years. Since Intel uh, used the chip that has the memory controller and Northbridge and SATA and everything integrated onto the chip, so you don't need a big motherboard, uh, now you can put a mini ITX uh, system together that is the same performance as a desktop was two years ago. Uh, so as a result, I think that you see a lot of people moving to mini ITX. I don't think they're switching away from full tower because we see full tower growing too. But what I think is happening is what used to be, you know, ATX standard mid tower yeah. uh, was was three quarters of the market and now it's kind of going to be about half the market and full towers are getting bigger and mini ITX are getting mm. bigger because people are kind of deciding they want to vary their their builds. Now that's very different in some regions. So for example mid tower is still a very very big segment of Latin America um, because I think mini ITX is, is too expensive a lot of the time and you don't get as much flexibility. You can't add a sound card or extra video card or whatever. Um, but I think that uh, when Mini ITX gets cheaper, uh, then it will be much more popular. Right now, it's still very expensive. You pay almost the same price for Mini ITX as you do for regular ATX, for motherboard and, and processor and everything's the same. Maybe because the technology involved the also. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. You know, and Mini ITX brings some challenges, right? The space is smaller, so it's harder to do cable routing to give the user a good uh, build experience and also cooling becomes challenging, right? So, you know, when we're doing small form factors, we looked at many different layouts. And I think the one you see here, back here, is based off our Air 540 case, which has uh, perfect air cooling. And, and the build is very good on this, on this case also, the cable routing space and, and so forth. So, so we really have to, you know, scratch our heads to really think, how do we really deliver on a small form factor a good build experience, a good uh, um, cooling uh, experience, and so forth, right? And, yeah, and a good look. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Guillermo hit it right on the head when he said that it's not just about the performance, that's part of the story, but um, many of us do this because we enjoy it. This is fun yes. to build yeah. a PC. I, I agree. Yeah. And, and taking anything that makes building a PC difficult or frustrating, taking that away is something we try to do. So. Whenever we can make you be able to install a hard drive without a screwdriver, or we can open the side panel with thumb screws, or we can you know, run cables in a cleaner way so you don't have to try and wedge it in there. We try and make that work because we build all these systems all the time, and sometimes it's as simple as you know, move this hole an inch to the left, and the whole case is easier to build. So we try to think about everything, right? We try to look at all possible configurations. Is this person going to do water cooling? Is he going to do air cooling? Is he going to use two hard drives? How easy it is to install? Can you do an SSD and a hard drive? Can, because there's many, many different builds that are going to happen, right? And we actually go in through a compatibility lab and actually build some of these in the case and get an experience. Then we say, oh, this isn't working. So we go back and change it, right? And, and that's how we try to really deliver on a good experience. There are many markings involved that people can see, okay? <laughs> Corsair, a few years ago, was known because it have expensive cases. Yeah. Now, uh, Corsair find a way, uh, Spec 1, for example, to have uh, budget cases. How uh, do you decide to, to find this, this, this way? Well, the first thing we did was look at, uh, the 200R was designed to be a very inexpensive case. Um, but what we found is that actually what drove the price uh, in certain regions was physical size. The larger the case is, the larger the box has to be. The larger the box has to be, the less you can fit into a container. And that means maybe only 10, 20% difference, um, but that can be a big difference in you know, Brazil. So when we looked at the 200R, we said, you know, how can we get this case just uh, really similar features, but just smaller and, and shrink it, you know, a little bit. And so we looked at 
uh, that, and we came up with kind of spec 01, spec 02, spec 03. And then we also asked, what do you like about the design? And you know, one of the things we heard from Latin America was they thought 200R was very serious, and they wanted a more gaming style. So that's why spec 01, spec 02, spec 03 look different also. Um, so we made it smaller, we changed the look a little bit, uh, and then actually that increased the number we can put in a container to ship to Brazil. So now it's 20% cheaper to get it. So that's yeah. why it's, it's less expensive than 200R, that's part of it. You know, the other thing we did is we took our competitor cases in the same price point uh, and we tore them apart. We took them all apart, took out, apart all the pieces, costed them out, uh, sized them, you know, how big are they, you know, how much would they cost. And that was our, our, our menu to build our case. And we said, okay, using these same number of parts so that we don't use more parts and we don't have higher cost than our competitors, how can we build a better case, right? And we looked at reviews, what they didn't like about competitors, what they did wrong, and we tried to do it all better with the same number of parts. And I think that helped us maintain within some cost targets um, that we needed to be at. So uh, you mean uh, that uh, every single region have different uh, shows. It, it seems yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you cannot please everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, okay. it's funny, uh, you know, for the guys who are watching right now, we just met with all of our, our salespeople from around the world. Yeah. Uh, we just met with everybody. And one of the things that was funny was, uh, you know, I, I sat down and I talked to the guy in Sweden, and he says, I love that, but I need it to be black. It okay. can't work if it's not black. Okay. I take the same thing to the guy in Japan. He says, if it's black, I can't sell it. It no, has okay. to be silver. <laughs> okay. So I literally have them completely disagree with each other. They love 99% the same thing, but they need one change from that region to this region. And so sometimes it's something that's small, but other times it's something very big. Okay. One of the things we've learned is that it's very difficult to have one case that everybody likes, right? Yeah. Okay. But uh, do you think the, the biggest focus today is gaming? The cases for gaming? I think that from a case perspective, I think what people do with their case is up to them. If you buy a PC and build a PC for gaming, great. Um, but the number of people who, the amount of time you spend gaming on your PC is not 100%. Uh, not every minute is spent playing games. Sometimes you work, sometimes you're you know, doing videos, sometimes you're watching a movie or you know, sending emails and photos. So everyone spends some percentage of time doing things that are not gaming. So I think that some people want gaming to be, yes, this is for gaming, and that's what it's mostly for. But other people kind of want to say, hey, I want to be able to game, but also I, I really want this to be a serious tool and not a toy. Uh, we cannot uh, forget that the, the case will be there every yeah. time. So yeah. if you have a green, a strong green yeah. case yeah. by your side, sometimes you, you, you want <laughs> to change this, okay. It's important, it's important that people, when they walk into the room yeah. where they keep their computer, that they see their computer and they, they like it after the first day or the 100th day. Yeah. They should like the way it looks. Yeah, too. I understand. So a question to Guillermo. Okay. Uh, how do you test cooling in the case? So we have a couple of systems that we call our, our cooling system, which is a defined motherboard, a PSU, a, a hard drive, some fan configurations. And what we do is every case that we build, we put that same system in it and test it uh, for thermal. We actually uh, run this, uh, a program that, that stresses the CPU and that stresses the GPU. And what we do is we see how long it takes it to go up to, to maximum fan speed. And the longer we can hold the GPU from getting to full fan speed, the better we're cooling the case because we're bringing in better uh, cold air and moving hot air out, right? Um, so what we do is we use the same system to, to test on all of our cases, all of these, so we can benchmark which one's better than the other. Um, and, and that's how we go about it. Then you can benchmark in Finland or in Sahara, it yeah. will be the same. Well, the, <laughs> the, we control the ambient temperature, right? Oh, it's okay. in a closed environment, it's 25C, you know, the program's the same. Okay. So it, it's, it's an apple to apple comparison. I see, okay. That, and sometimes the objective is, is to maintain a cooling level, but at a very low noise. So, mm. for example, some cases we design to be very quiet. Uh, for people who have it in their bedroom or for people who have it uh, and they're doing music at home, or, tea at yeah, home theater, yeah. things like yeah. that, they want it very, very quiet. So we do uh, a metric where we say, this is the performance we need. How, how quiet can we make that performance level? And so usually we kind of work backwards on that one. You know, with cooling, for example, it's 
how much performance can we get? And then what's the tolerable noise level? How, how loud are we okay with? So you have um, a sweet spot yeah. and, and so noise for, and uh, for, uh, temperature. Yeah. Yes. For Air 540, we said cooling is the most important and noise is the second most okay. important. For 330R, it was noise is the most important and cooling was second most important. So sometimes you just balance the scales just a little bit differently. Okay. And what we do with the prototypes, we actually have maybe holes everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And then we close off the top holes and run the fans in this configuration and say, okay, how does this cool? Then move the fan in another place and, and the front fans here or put, you know, uh, forward pressure or, or pressure, you know, uh, remove more air than we bring in, right? Um, so, so we exhaust more of the air out. And we try a lot of different configurations to see how the box will perform well. And then we pick the, the best one for shipping. So. How about the future of the cooling and the cases? I think uh, most of what we're going to be doing over the next little bit is updating our cases. So we take the case that we sell really well, everyone loves, and see you know what has changed in the industry. For example, uh, when we launched the 300R, uh, you know, four years ago almost, the cases had a lot of uh, optical drive bays, 5.25 inch drive bays. But now, not so many. One or two is enough. So if we decided to update that, maybe we would reduce the number of optical drive bays or um, add a better SSD support or things like that. Um, cool, bigger graphics cards, things like these. Yeah. This is the focus of how would we update the product line. So we started five years ago and we had nothing. So it was very easy because anything we launched was better than zero. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I if, even if we only sell 10 cases, that's better than nothing. But now we have good sale. We have a lot of cases that are moving. So now the question is, how do we update that so that more people want to buy that, you know? And the, the important part of that is listening to the user feedback. So we really need to hear from you guys what you want us to do with our cases. What do you want to buy? And, you know, post a comment or tell Ronaldo and he'll tell me. <laughs> okay. And about the cooling? You know, so, so one of the areas that we're continuously focusing on is, as George mentioned before, how do we find the balance between good cooling and low noise, right? And we're continuously prototyping and testing new things to really find a striking balance that we can be better on both areas because they're opposing ends, right? You, you airflow too well and you're too noisy. You shut it down and, the, and you can't really have a lot of airflow going through it, right? Uh, so we're really trying to find a balance where we can really control and really come up with cases that really perform well in terms of a combination of cooling and, and noise level. That's a great interview with you, uh, very nice, really nice. Uh, eu queria falar para vocês que, para mim, foi excelente a entrevista com eles, os caras são muito legais, é um grande prazer estar tá, tá com eles, conhecer esses caras, que eles são top de linha. Obrigado por ter assistido aí, espero que vocês tenham gostado, e a gente pretende trazer aí muita coisa nova pela frente. Falou aí. Hey, Thank you.